berberine is better than we thought. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Fakel Show. And today I want to talk about berberine again. I know I've done some past videos on berberine, but uh, with an accumulation of research, I mean, it is just uh, profound, um, all the information out there on berberine and, and how many benefits it can have for you, uh, especially if you have chronic health issues, autoimmune type issues. So let's, uh, let's dive right into that and uh, find out more here. So first, um, uh, there's a uh, research paper. Let's see if we can add that in. Uh, that's been out and it's from biomedicine and pharmacotherapy. And uh, it's all about berberine, but it had an interesting um, picture in it, interesting information, kind of general inf information on berberine. And so let, let's go over this. So basically, if we start to look at this, let's start on the diabetes side, kind of on the left-hand side there. And um, so we already know that berberine, or mo most people that, that look into this stuff know that berberine does help with blood sugar. But here's some, some basics here. Increases insulin secretion, decreases insulin resistance, helps your body store and utilize blood sugar better with gluconeogenesis, increased glucose uptake, decreased inflammation. I mean, just on and on. Gut microbiota dysbiosis decrease. Um, let's let's kind of go clockwise next to obesity. It decreases the body weight. It, it increases your ability or decreases fat cells, which is adipogenesis or fat cell production. Um, helps your body to maintain proper temperature and with metabolism, increases energy expenditure for the right things, adipose tissue fibrosis. So basically breaks down or helps to decrease uh, the scar tissue that develops around adipose tissue, decreased inflammation, again, back to the gut. And then we'll kind of continue around there. Hepatic helps prevent fatty liver, basically helps decrease the amount of fats in the stool, uh, decreases liver inflammation, decreases oxidative stress on the liver, helps with the gut bacteria, again, almost all of these, and then down to hyperlipidemia. As we go down a little lower there, I mean, decreases um, cholesterol or lipid sy synthesis. Um, it helps with the um, uh, sensing of the LDLs. And then uh, de increases cholesterol excretion, meaning get rid of the bad cholesterol out of your system. Here's a real interesting one that you don't hear often about. Go down to that lower corner on the left there is gout. So decreases uric acid levels. Wow. Decreases uric or increases uric acid excretion. So you get that extra uric acid for your urine and get it out of your body um, and decreases xanthine oxidase. That's the one that goes high that they try to use the drug to block and then decreases uh, joint inflammation. So pretty amazing stuff here. In fact, that's what I want to do is go over even more benefits of this um, amazing um, supplement that I'm um, just uh, captivated with right now. <laughs> All right. So, you know, there's over um, 5,000 different studies, over 5,000 different research papers on berberine. I mean, the research is profound. It's more than you can read. Uh, I mean, unless you do a lot of reading of research, you know, and so the clinical indications for this based on that research, they're saying, hey, you can use this for all these conditions and it helps. That's what they're saying. So what does it help? Autoimmune diseases. The most of the research has been on rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, encephalomyelitis, colitis, irritable bowel disease, PCOS. You'll hear a lot about that. Polycystic ovarian syndrome that occurs in women. Yeah, it helps with that insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, diabetes. So diabetes and pre-diabetes, big effects, tons of research on that. Helps with obesity. Of course, part of that's because of, it helps with the blood sugar, helps with pain, helps with depression and anxiety, is a cancer preventer. Stomatitis, that sores in the mouth. It helps with that. Helps with ki prevent kidney stones helps with kidney disease like renal ischemia and reperfusion, helps with traumatic brain injury. Wow, big stuff. In fact, there is more. Also, cardiovascular disease, what the heck? 
helps with atherosclerosis. That's placking in your arteries, helps with heart failure. People who've had that helps to, um, actually that should be decreased cholesterol, not increased. Helps with people who have arrhythmias, vasorelaxant. That means it relaxes the blood vessels so you get increased blood flow, which lowers blood pressure. And that's really this next one. It helps people with high blood pressure. I guess really it should say that helps people with high cholesterol. Stroke, people who've had strokes, this can help with. There's, there's research on it helping people with myocardial infarction, which is heart attack. Then neuro neurodegenerative uh, diseases. How many of your doctors talk about, hey, uh, berberine's good for people who have Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. There's research that shows it. Uh, thrombocytopenia. So people who have low platelet counts, this has helped. Uh, micturition. So people who have frequent urination. Benign prostatic hypertrophy. So if you have um, uh, enlarged prostate, benign enlarged prostate, yeah, this has been shown helpful. Also, memory enhancement. Hey, all of us could probably use some of that. And then IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, SIBO, IBD, which is irritable bowel disease, um, constipation, diarrhea, people who suffer from that, people who have H. pylori infection, that's an infection that can occur in the stomach. It's also an antiparasitic, antiviral. It helps with leaky gut, helps with liver fibrosis. So if you start to get scar tissue in your liver due to uh, hepatitis or due to alcoholism, helps with uh, GERD gastroesophageal reflux. So if you have reflux, heartburn, indigestion, also gastric ulcers. Wow. Big wow. So a lot of stuff. Um, very, imp very impressive with berberine. So how do you take this? What, what kind of dose is, is found to be best in this research? Looking at about 500 milligrams, two to three times per day. Now I would say most people two times a day is plenty. Um, if you start to exceed a thousand milligrams, taking it more than three times per day. Yeah, I might use that in people who have maybe uh, more chronic conditions, autoimmune conditions, maybe where I know that they need that extra, but I would only use it for a certain period of time because if you exceed a thousand milligrams for longer than three months, you may potentially get some effects of that. Now, really, the thing about it is in the research, there's really, there are no serious side effects or reactions, nothing documented. But what can happen though is if you do use too high of a dose or you take a high dose for too long, could get some abdominal pain or discomfort, could get some nausea, could get some constipation, could get some flu-like symptoms. But I, the only one I've really ever seen is people maybe get a little nauseated if they get too much. But then, you know, you can adjust, adjust the dose. Everybody's body's different. Everybody needs a little different amount. I would tend to start off low and always, of course, ask your doctor before you start taking anything. But definitely um, great stuff here with the, the berberine. Very exciting. I just wanted to report that to you so you know the benefits. Know that this is a supplement that could really um, have tremendous benefits with most people. So, uh, all right. And, and not only that, but shown in over... 5,000 plus research studies. How can doctors ignore that? I can't. All right. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this today. Have a wonderful day and God bless. I'll see you next time.